I just made a mix board of Will Bewley. Look at you. Is this just like I guess a British right. haunted house? Welcome to the vibe flow. With Jordan and Will. Let's go. Tech news and the odd trends. Tune in now with your friends. All right, welcome to Vibe Flow. How are you, Will? Good. Happy Vibe Flow, Jordy. Happy Vibe Flow. Very interesting DACA today. Very Google specific. We have Google takes on Pinterest with this new inspo board. Google learn your way. Is it rivaling like a Duolingo? And then we also have Hux, which isn't owned by Google. But it's spun out of Google from the one of the Google products, whichever one. We'll, 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 we'll get in. We'll dive into that. We'll dive into Google that. making moves in, uh, in AI again. Many moves. Uh, but first, two demos. Here we go. This one, not very good. Here we go. I tried to make a story for you, Will. In the vibrant living room, Will. Vibrant. Rooming with youthful exuberance. Bound with a brightly colored ball. It looks exactly he like you. attempts to engage Slow Mo, who lounges serenely in a hammock. I was wondering who Slow Mo was. Difference. I got Slow it now. Slow Mo's eyes open in a languid blink. His response is study in Slow Mo. Okay, in their defense, I didn't want to pay for full animation. <laughs> what is this? This looks very similar to what we did uh, a week or two ago. Let's see. There's like one... There was like one animated clip ah whatever i'm over it it was pretty bad it 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 claimed to be like a really great storytelling app where you can explain what you wanted to do go through a couple steps it makes you like a really nice animated sh movie yeah the promises i think over promised under delivered severely over over delivered yeah yeah i feel it's kind of like the warp i've seen kind of coming into like the timeline and like instagram and Facebook and stuff. It's like this kind of like AI generated slop that's like not really saying much. And there's yep. a bunch of actually like fake podcasts that kind of take the same same approach as well. So it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Second demo real quick. This one doesn't actually work anymore, but I want to explain why, why I showed. I don't know if you've seen this. If you press but... leaderboard, you can see some stuff. Okay, cool. So leaderboard, these are all ticketing officers in San Francisco. And so what this person did, which is absolutely hilarious, is they reverse engineered how ticket, how you can actually determine where tickets are being uh, created in real time. And they even have, let's see, do I have the, yeah, here we go. They made a quick little blog post about how they did it. <laughs> they basically realized that all the IDs are relatively incremental for each ticket. And so they're just basically pounding the government site and trying to find the next ticket that's been generated in the system. And TLDR, RIP, the second, this, the second this website got launched on Hacker News or wherever it was launched, the city was able to shut it down, which I'm actually surprised that they were able to shut it down so quickly. How quick they were able to yeah. hot, hot deploy something. Yeah, this was really interesting. I think it was around yesterday for about four hours. And... Um, what it was also a proponent of is like you can see the route that the ticketing officers are going because you can see where the tickets are headed. And so it's like warning if you're like anyway, if you're parked into this, you probably want to move move your car if it's if it's out of um, citation. Actually, as a side note, yesterday I got hit with a forty five dollar fine parking at my ferry uh, terminal in Larkspur. Boo. But I used the parking app. So I don't know what messed up between uh the parking app that i use and the ferry people but they were not aligned so now it's a super annoying i'm gonna have to go and fight my case um reading why the small print here but super annoying why don't you use that app that just fights it for you that's true it uses ai agents to fight it for you come on will i thought you were right. AI pilled. i'll report I'll, I'll use that and we can report back next okay. week on on how how i did um, please please do let's do it all right, moving on. Hux. And I believe it's called Hux or pronounced Hux. It's H-U-X-E. Maybe Hux. This is created by some of the engineers from Notebook LM. That's the product from Google. We use right. Notebook LM. It's awesome. It basically turns content that you upload, PDFs, whatever, into essentially podcasts. And so what they've done, they've created an app 
that in in this description, it kind of explains that uh, it allows you to add different types of um, of data. It doesn't actually talk too much about exactly what the product is, but it's sort of like a feed, like a daily feed of what you want to listen to. And it generates these custom podcasts every single day. Uh, so I actually downloaded it and I'll give you my uh, TLDR on it. I think it's actually super cool. Like I, I'm going to actually try to use it a little bit more. I did just do a few basic like days of trying to listen to my feed and doesn't know me too well. And I also have not connected my calendar and my email, which it wants me to connect. That's so that's a little, it's a little scary, but I like the idea of it because it's supposed to like talk you through your day, give you like, you know, you're, you're talking about everything you would talk to somebody about in the morning. Like, here's what I have to do today. Here's what's coming up in my calendar. Here's some emails I have to respond to. Is it billed as a personal assistant? Or, or, no, or something different? it's billed. Yeah, I mean, it's billed as like a, I don't know, just a thing. It's very interesting. That's what they use in their, in their elevator pitch. A it's thing. a thing. It's a thing. It's a very nice thing, but I think it's I think it's a good idea. And I did actually I forget where I heard it, but I I heard some people talking about as you commute to work in your car. So if you're by yourself and you're commuting to work, there's a lot of time there that you can like actually have some valuable moments if you're able to interact verbally, verbally and audibly with like your Tesla or something, right? Can your Tesla actually walk you through your emails? Can your Tesla have a whole conversation with you about what's going on today? Not just you personally through your calendar and everything, but with like the news that's come out today. So my guess is that's kind of where they're going. They kind of mm. want to just be like on all encompassing, like, you know, today wrapped, like what's going on today. And they do have a microphone. So eventually I think you'll be interacting with it more. Haven't really gotten that far yet, but. That's my thought. What do you think? Yeah, it's cool. I think uh, when we saw Notebook LM sort of take off, it was like crazy to think that this was coming out of Google because historically, like these smaller projects that, that like take flight and not coming out of huge companies. And so it was cool to see that like, Google could actually uh, do this. And so um, we were all really excited. Uh, we used it a lot. We still use it. I think they've continued to develop it a bit, but actually like the core people, the PM and, and, and some of the maybe the researchers left. And I think that's probably a signal that like, hey, we have, why are we doing this in, internal to Google? And so they went their own way. We were wondering what they were working on their stealth startup for, for a few months now. This is what they've launched with. I think it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I will say that like a lot of people are trying to crack um, the sort of sound and, and mic way of, of interaction. So like the, the best medium we've had for, for a very long time for um, you know, looking at media or or interacting with your day-to-day -day has been visual it's so it's been computer screens it's been uh, you know the iphone is like the perfect example of like the greatest form factor that's ever been de devised but it doesn't work in a hands-free environment and so a lot of people are betting we talked about meta glasses so like it, it allows a little bit of visual but the glasses allow interaction as well right like they have they have um, microphones on them and they have speakers on them so they allow that kind of interaction so yeah i think like what is the right form factor for for this i think even if like a screen is maybe like the best version of, of what you can use, I think there's a bet that to your point that there's going to be times when you want to be a hand free or you want to be doing something else and you still want to interact with it. So, you know, the Apple Watch might have been the closest thing to like trying to check on your calendar before you get to a meeting in your car, but that's also pretty impractical, probably not advisable. So I like it from that idea. I also like that they're probably taking then the notebook LM approach to kind of condensing information. So also right now there's a proliferation of podcasts. We know all about that. Like if you have four podcasts that you need to listen to or you really want to listen to to get the, like the, the hot takes out of them, maybe you can actually just have this thing summarize them uh, as part of your, your way in as well. So um, I find it very interesting. I wish them luck. It's called Hux. Um, and I'm excited to see what, see what they do. Hux. Super quick. Do you listen to podcasts while you work? Like can you actually accomplish work and listen to yeah me neither but i do know people that do that and they're they're just crazy people i listen to a lot of podcasts doing like house chores like i'm cleaning or i'm doing something like that or i'm driving yeah oftentimes it's, that is what i'll do when i'm driving alone will be listening to a podcast i don't do house chores so i solve that problem okay moving on google launches a mix board it's basically like a pinterest board but 
in the era of AI. It's actually really cool. And I will show you what I've pinned. No, they probably don't like that. Mixed. It's like when, uh, yeah, when Twitter got renamed to X and then it was, um, you st everyone still calls them tweets, but I'm sure they like, X doesn't like that people call them tweets. I brought in my AI generated dog. What do you think? It's very realistic. It's very cute. She doesn't okay. bark when she's being held. That's how you we'll know see. it's AI. We'll <sighs> see. Oh, nope. She's getting canceled. All right. We're back. All right. Mixed board. Here we go. Here's a little TechCrunch article on it. Lovely. But here's Ooh. my mix board. straight in. Embroidered cowboy hat. Inspiration. This what is, are you doing? What are you doing for in a few we weeks? We might be Jordan? going to Bend, Oregon in two weeks for our company offsite. And I'm looking for an embroidered cowboy hat. What do you think about that? So I just asked. And these are it, all AI generated? I don't know. It's a great question. I know this one is because what you I can like, do like is you can, I clicked it and I said, incorporate a sloth. So let's just like click another one. Oh yeah, this is good. So you click this, I'm gonna say, make it a sloth. So it's kind of like a wolf, right? It's like a, like a crying wolf. And it's gonna try to do the same thing, same inspo, but as a sloth. So oh, yeah, on pretty that? good, pretty good. Okay, okay. What do you think? Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting that they're doing it to the point of like Google doesn't ship uh, projects anymore. It seems like they're like really open now to to yeah. AI things. I think this also talks to like the 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 negative side of AI. So like a lot of people, I don't really use Pinterest, but a lot of people that do use Pinterest are kind of like really annoyed that it's become such an AI slop generated system. So like you can't trust any of the pictures uh, anymore if they're going to be real or not. So it feels like maybe Google's just leaning into that and like maybe we should have a sanitized real life aesthetics um app and then we should have like just one that's fully ai generated well let's see if it is ai generated i just made a mix board of will buley this is just will buley look at you oh, looking doesn't that mean good. so yeah looking I feel good like these are generated is this just like like a generated. british haunted house this is so you I love smoky it. jazz that's me i love it i love it okay finally one more story here and that is Learn your way. Again, More Google. Google. This is crazy. This is something you brought to my attention about five minutes before the pod. Please tell me what it's about. It looks awesome. It looks actually like quite similar to, I guess, what the objectives are with things like Notebook LM. Yeah, uh, I thought it was super cool uh, to see it. You can like jump in with um, uploading a, a PDF and you can like try it straight away. The... I think one of the obvious use cases for LLMs when they first came out was to teach you things, right? And so in a more sort of text-based manner, um, we're already seeing studies showing that kids that are using like an AI tutor are actually outperforming those that are not. And so making that like easily accessible to kind of the masses is, is going to be, I'm sure there's a lot of startups like aiming at it, but there's also like more fundamental, like is it big organizations that are responsible? Are universities or schools responsible? Um, like, what about continuing education? Like, if you're a lawyer and you have to do, you know, 15, 20 hours of, of new study every year to keep up with your uh, professional certifications, you know, there's so much learning uh, that that needs to be applied. And so I think there's just like a ton of ability to be able to make um, apps for that. And I think what they're providing here with an idea is kind of a more of a structured way of, of doing that and working through content in a seamless manner. And so, yeah, as you see here, you have, it's more aimed, it looks like like high school, college type um, classes like chemistry or philosophy. So it's not quite Duolingo yet, but you can imagine this easily going into to languages as well. So, yeah. um, you know, if, if you want to learn a lot more about, um, you know, Three Eye Atlas is this comet coming from interstellar space in a few weeks, Jordan, if you want to learn more about astronomy, look, there's a class there for you. So we can, we like can it. get, we can get deep and talk about um, about this comet that's coming, um, and you'll better like you better flex your skills. I do like this uh, idea where it's like, here's the content, and who are you? Like, how could we customize this so that you'll get the best experience for you personally? Um, that's yeah. that's uh, 
That's an awesome feature. I think customized, like customizable, like AI tutors that are completely to your level is definitely the future. Um, and so we'll see that. I think like the real, the real issue is going to come to like the incumbents, like are the universities, are the the high schools going to adopt this? Are they going to feel threatened by it? Uh, so I do like that Google's kind of trying to take a, take um, some action on it as well. Awesome. Well, mega Google day for us. That does it for the vibe flow. Please subscribe, like, and watch all of our sweet videos. Will, it was great to see you. And thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, everyone. Happy vibe flow. Happy vibe flow. Mm -hmm.